welcome back to my course industrial biotechnology the so in the last uh, lecture i was uh, concentrating on uh, citric lactic acid uh, production so i i talk already about the basic aspect of lactic acid now i will show you how industry that produces lactic acid so if you if you if you if you look at the raw materials that is used uh, suitable most suitable for lactic acid production is the whey because whey is the by product of the dairy industry because you know that when you we produce uh, this uh, that uh, uh, cottage cheese that you know that uh, that uh, whey comes out that uh, this uh, this contains uh, um, a very less amount of uh, protein and fat but uh, the liquid mostly contains the lacto lactose and which is which is a very good raw materials for the lactic acid formation the whey why we whey use the whey for this fermentation process the reason is that it is by product of the dairy industry and second is that is a very cheap raw materials it contains 4.6% to about 7% of lactose then 10 to 15% of sugar because the cream is removed from the milk and casein is precipitated from uh, by uh, from the use of uh, hydrochloric acid or uh, and also we sometimes we use uh, in the house we use the calcium lactate to precipitate out the protein when the whey the whey which is the product left after the separation of the cream and the and the casein from the milk contains albumin approximately uh, uh, 4.5 6% of lactose vitamin g mineral salts and the Uh, water because you know that uh, this solid material mostly it contains the milk protein and fat and all the minerals uh, and the vitamin g and lactose goes in the soluble forms and uh, this media serve as a as nutrient uh, substrate for the manufacture of lactic acid now let me show you the steps involved in the lactic acid production is very uh, we we prepared uh, the culture in a slant Uh, then uh, from the slant uh, uh, we we in you know, inoculate in the media uh, in the sec flux where uh, the liquid media that this is the solid media then this is the this is agar agar slant to grow the culture then in liquid media in the sec flux we grow this culture after that it go it grow in a control fermenters and we get the cell mass and this cell mass we put it in the production fermenter which uh, produces lactic acid but it pass through the different downstream processing like uh, filtration evaporation and the purification so uh, so this is the this is the so three steps involve major steps one is preparation of starter starter means the the organism that we prepared for this production and there is fermentation that we, what is carried out in the production fermenter and the lactic acid uh, so if you look at the normal uh, this uh, uh, that fermentation industry whatever we have it is almost similar to that in the normal fermentation industry also i told you that every industry they have two two uh, uh, reactors bio reactors one for the cell mass production another for the uh, product form for the so cell mass production we call it inoculum vessel and production fermenter we call it the uh, 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 pf the production fermenter so now let us see that uh, what is the first step that we have in the preparation of the starter a quarts of uh, sterilized skim milk is inoculated with the culture lactobacillus delbrueckii containing yeast uh, uh, that causes the uh, fermentation to become more vigorous the, uh, after after uh, incubation for 24 hours because you know that one thing here i want to point out that doubling time of bacteria is much less as compared to uh, yeast cell the if you even you yeast if you add it it, it gives some kind of nutrient to the fermentation broth it is not uh, affect the growth of the organism to a great extent i i told you you can remember in the citric acid fermentation process 
we use the cane molas as the raw material for the production of citric acid and main culprit main that uh, contaminants that we have in the citric acid fermentation process at the yeast why because the uh, cane molas is the best raw material for the growth of yeast cells and if you look at the doubling time of yeast cell is much less as compared to that of fungi so if little yeasts enter into the system that will not allow the fungi to grow so here we don't have any problem if you use is the because your bacteria you look at the the yeast if you bacteria doubling time is much less lactobacillus delbrueckii and co contains yeast uh, causes the uh, to become the vigorous then after incubation for 24 hours at temperature 43 degree centigrade the content of the bottle is placed in a uh, in container with pasteurized skim milk this content of the jug transferred after the inoculation 43 degrees at 24 hours into a glass lined uh, steel tank containing uh, 500 gallons of pasteurized whey because you know that uh, one thing i want to point out that lactic acid is a, has a corrosive property so uh, the special type of construction material of construction of the fermentation uh, uh, that uh, uh, the tank is to be maintained following incubation at 43 degree centigrade for 24 hours the tartar is added to the main fermentation tank so we first pre prepared the culture what we call inoculum is the inoculum and then we this inoculum we used to the production fermenter the step 2 is the material of construction the lactic acid is highly corrosive as i pointed out and therefore it has it has problem in relation to its production processing and handling the the non corrosive material is usually used for the construction of fermenters the two of the material of construction which is mostly resistant to lactic acid are silver and uh, talta lum this is the two metal with their quite resistant to lactic acid so this is usually uh, recommended the group of materials which are fairly resistant to lactic acid are nickel uh, incolenol it an incolen is nothing but nickel chromium based uh, super alloy and low iron alloy then group materials which are poor resistant to lactic acid they are iron copper and chrome steel etc I I I mentioned that chromium plays important to increase the corrosive property of the stainless steel but here it is not that effective and usually the fermenter is constructed with heavy wood because uh, that you know I I uh, I in the acetic acid fermentation process I was talking about the beech wood saving which is a soft wood with a lot of pore inside but here we are talking about the hardwood hardwood also like oak oak wood we sometimes we can use for this as a vessel but hardwood we can use as a vessel modern fermenter is constructed with stainless steel fermenter is provided with the hesitator hesitator is required so that you know cell can remain in suspension the inoculated way is maintained at 43 degree centigrade fermentation time is 42 hours calcium hydroxide in the form of slurry is added to the in the fermentation mass every 6 hours to keep to keep the acidity much below 1% 0.1% because <clears throat> because if you use the high you allow the acidic acidity build up then that will hinder the growth of the organism so this is to be maintained so we add the and i i already mentioned in case of citric acid fermentation process how calcium hydroxide is produced i told you that um, calcium carbonate which is in the present in the rock this when you heat it uh, it produces calcium oxide and carbon dioxide the so carbon dioxide will goes out then this calcium hydroxide calcium oxide in presence of water you may slurry you will get calcium hydroxide the this calcium hydroxide you have to add the, that you have to add and when you add the calcium hydroxide when in presence of lactic acid it produce calcium lactate
So, uh, neutralizing the acetic, acetic uh, lactic acid with lime has several advantages such as the shorter fermentation time, higher yield, pre prevention of bacterial inhibition due to the production of acid. So, these are the reason why we use the lime. Now, this is the flow diagram of the process. This flow diagram is like this that uh, we, we take the cheese whey, we can take whey from other source also. The, then we do the ultra filtration, whey proteins we take it out, uh, maybe you heat it, then protein will be precipitated out, then you can you can take out the whey protein through the ultra filtration. Then in the fermenters we inoculate the lactobacillus lactic acid bacteria here, then after production we pass this to the nano filter, we get, uh, we get uh, 2 to 10 percent of lactic acid, then RO filtration the reverse osmosis that we, we carried out to get the higher concentration of lactic acid, then vacuum, vacuum, vacuum evaporation we get 90 point to 98 percent lactic acid. And this lactic acid we can, we can, we can go for the polymerization reaction to get the polylactic acid. So, we, what you call polylactide because the, I, because I told you that uh, uh, polylactic acid has tremendous potentiality in the pharmaceutical industries. Now, I want to uh, show you the reactions how polylactide lactate, lactate formation is there. This is the lactic acid. If you look at two lactic acid when form, it is form the lactide and this lactide actually help for the formation of polylactic acid. Now, if you look at the polylactic acid is biodegradable. Why? why we use the polylactic acid. The reason is that it is biodegradable and it is mostly used in food handling and medicinal medic medical in implant that biodegradable within the body over time. That this is very important medical implants that biodegrade within the body over time. So, this is this is the why it is used for the medicinal purpose or the, for particularly in case of surgical uh, purpose is largely used. Like most of the plastics, it has potential to be toxic if inhale or absorb and absorb into the skin, eyes as a paper or liquid. During manufacturing process, obviously, if uh, this polymer equally affected to the human health it is no good, but when it is solidified it does not have mad effect for the human health, it is, it is easily biodegradable. So, uh, then the question comes how we recovered the, uh, recovered the lactic acid, calcium hydroxide is added to the broth to lower the acidity below 0.1 percent and then heated to 80 to 95 degrees centigrade with the help of coagulation protein, coagulation of protein and filtered. The filtered then allowed to evaporate to dryness uh, to get the calcium lactate. And uh, so, initially we have our intention is to produce the calcium lactate and this lactic calcium pure calcium lactate it is dissolved in water and treated with the, the decoloring um, carbon and mix it through thoroughly and stand for 15 minutes and filter because it, uh, it may give some kind of color to the product that is why we use the activated carbon just to activated carbon I mentioned before also it has some kind of bleaching property. So, if you use the, uh, the, the, the color can be removed you have uh, and then we, we, we prepared the lactic acid calcium lactate to be treated with H2 support to get the dilute uh, dilution uh, solution of uh, lactic acid and calcium sulphate get precipitated out. We can separate out the like you know in case of citric acid also we, we hydrolyze the calcium citrate by H2 support, we separate the calcium sulphate in the form of gypsum filter. In the gypsum filter, we separate this calcium sulphate to H2O that is called gypsum, which is, which is a good, very good raw material for the cement industry. And then uh, the dilute solution is heated to high temperature, then some chemical changes uh, may occur and it forms the calcium anhydrous. So, um, if you use the very high temperature, it, it goes it again, again, you will get the different product that lactobacillus is not desirable. 
Now, let us see that uh, how actually lactic acid is produced. The, this is uh, the fermentation product. After that, you will you will get this and you get the calcium lactate about 10 percent uh, weight by volume and when it goes to the reactor where you push the, uh, this uh, base to support and uh, heat it for 30 degrees centigrade now uh, and then then uh, we in, in, in previous case I mentioned that we heat it to 80 to 90 degrees centigrade and then we centrifuge it at the high temperature we we get calcium sulfate and then we evaporate it uh, so that your concentration of citric acid, lactic acid increases we filter it impurities will goes out lactic acid equals 60 percent weight by this uh, this is available in the liquid form this lactic acid the re reaction is li like this calcium lactate plus h 2 so keep lactic acid and calcium sulfate now, containers used in distribution. Now, question comes since uh, lactic acid has highly corrosive property. So, di distribution in the container also is the very, uh, very important. The aqueous solution of lactic acid is sold and distributed in wooden or paraffin lined uh, barrels of oak, cypress, and pitch pine or in line car uh, tanks. The higher grade acid are solid in glass line in car cars or carboys. So uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is some glass line materials also can be used for that uh, for for transferring this material. Then it will not affect the material of construction to a great extent. Otherwise, uh, you have to do uh, the other otherwise the the, uh, the material uh, will be affected with the help of lactic acid so this is very important now uh, let me tell you that uh, what are the different types of lactic acid usually available in the market because this is also very important the lactic acid can be available in the two different forms one is uh, crude or technical grade lactic acid which is uh, 20 to 80 percent. This is largely used, uh, this lactic acid strength is there. Edible, that is 50 to 80 percent that we have uh, lactic acid. Plastic, we required 50 to 80 percent lactic acid. In the United States, uh, pharmacopoeia, that is UPS medicinal grade is 85 percent. So, different uh, different uh, uh, percentage of lactic acid that is used for different purpose that we have. Now, if you look at um, the that what are the uh, different grades that we have that uses for different purposes. As for example, crude grade, this is colored, the various form differ from yellow to brown and it is used in deliming heights. Uh, limes uh, are removed that uh, animal skin this is uh, particularly uh, i can i can tell in the in the tannery industry is largely used for that and then uh, dyeing the silk and other textile that is uh, that is the crude grade of lactic acid is largely used then um, edible usually this is the yellow yellow color and that is used uh, in the jam, jelly and brine fermentation, casein precipitation and for fat extraction. So, uh, that, that uh, different purpose it is used for edible when we use, I can, I can give the example of calcium lactate I was telling the largely we use in the, uh, in the house for precipitating thing, the milk, protein and fat because we use for several purpose. Then uh, uh, we have other different grades we have, we have plastic grades, it is uh, colorless and uh, generally used for the manufacture of plastics because I told you that lactic acid has huge market potentiality in the pharmaceutical industry and this plastic gauge has lot of use in this, uh, in, in this industry. And UPS is a is a pharmaceutical grade of the lactic acid, and use uh, in the pharmaceutical formulation purpose. So this is uh, all about about the uh, lactic acid fermentation process. Now here I want to uh, summarize like this that uh, lactic acid is produced 
by using uh, two different type of bacteria uh, in the industry largely used one is lactobacillus delbocchi and another lactobacillus bulgaricus the uh, temperature is little bit high usually 43 degree centigrade uh, or higher temperature that is used for this uh, fermentation process and raw materials uh, contains we find that whey which is the which is, a, which is a byproduct of the dairy industry. It is very fine suitable for this fermentation process and uh, the, it has been observed that uh, amino acid uh, uh, present in the, in the yeast extract and malt extract they find very suitable for the growth of the yeast cells, growth of the lactic acid bacteria. Then when you come to the uh, fermentation process that uh, after, 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 after during the fermentation process we maintain the acidity by using uh, calcium hydroxide or calcium carbonate <coughs> and since we are adding the calcium hydroxide, uh, the calcium hydroxide will react with lactic acid and form calcium lactate and then after the this required about 40 uh, 42 to 46 hours and after fermented the your your inoculum um, uh, fermentation for the uh, cell mass production is required 24 hours and then after the production fermented the the the, the material we we treated with uh, with uh, with the, we, we concentrate that we separate out the calcium uh, cal calcium lactate and then we hydrolyze in presence of H2SO4 we get the lactic acid and calcium sulfate calcium sulfate precipitated out with the help of filtration other cases also we do some kind of filtration process just to separate out lot of uh, uh, suspended material in the in the fermentation broth including the bacterial suspension so, this is all about uh, the lactic acid bacteria, uh, thank you very much.